Jack Haley, Stanley Clements, Jack Bailey. Star on Family Theater. The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents For the Love of Angel, starring Stanley Clements and Jack Bailey. Brief portions are transcribed. Jack Haley is your host. This is Jack Haley, neighbors. Did you ever happen to be jingling some coins in your hand and get to examining the dimes and quarters and pennies? You'll see on every coin these words, In God We Trust. Of course, it's something that everybody knows about, but it makes me realize that every time we exchange a coin, we're offering a silent act of faith in God. It makes me realize that in all our coinage, there's inscribed the same conviction that we in Hollywood want to express through family theater. It's a conviction so many of us share, an understanding that the simple, direct appeal of prayer to God can bring hope and happiness and God's wonderful help to us and to our families. And we, we need trust in God and have faith in one another if we are to have a peaceful world, a prosperous nation, and happy homes. You know, a world of happy homes would go a long way to a peaceful world. And here's a thought for a happy home. Pray together as a family. Yes, pray together tonight, after your evening meal and every night, because family prayer will keep your family together and happy. And you'll find this true for every country and home. A family that prays together stays together. Jack Haley returns after our family theater story for The Love of Angel, starring Stanley Clements and Jack Bailey. <laughs> Ginger, you don't want to feel like that. I'll feel like I please. What kind of man are you anyway? Now look, just because I won't eat steak... Do you realize what I had to pay for that filet mignon? Do you realize I got off work early just to cook for you? Do you realize I what I... I can't did? help it, baby. I can't eat it. Well, why not? What's wrong with steak? It's... it's cow. Sure it's cow. What'd you think it was, mink? Well, I can't eat it, and that's all there is to it. Now leave me alone, will oh, you please? Oh, George! <laughs> I never told anybody why I don't eat steak, and I never thought I'd have to. I wouldn't have told Ginger, except, well, she's kind of special. I got plans kicking around in my head to make this a permanent arrangement. You know what I mean? Besides, I never was able to listen to a gal cry. It gets me every time. Now, look, honey, it ain't that I don't like steak. I'm crazy about it. Then why won't you eat it? Because I... Well, it's a kind of a thing a guy don't want yucked about, see? And if you ever crack wise to any of my friends, any of those hep Georgie, I'll... what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the war. Now, you wouldn't think a hunk of beef could have anything to do with the war, would you? But in my mind, the three of them will always be tied up in the same package. The war and Hank and Angel. Yes, sir, war does screwy things to a guy. It got me tangled up with this rural Joe by the name of Hank Adams. Now, ain't that a moniker for you? And so help me, he looked it too. A Hollywood version of Abe Lincoln with a musket if I ever saw one. Tall, lanky, a regular beanpole, and brother, that cornball talk of his. But I don't get to know this, Hank, until the morning of the African landing. We're already in the landing barge, you see? I look around me. Some of the guys I think are really tough are chewing their nails right down to the elbow. The only guy in the my barge that don't look tilted is this cow jockey, Hank Adams. So I give him the nudge. Hiya, pal. Well, howdy. How are you? My name's Gordon, Georgie Gordon. Yeah? Well, my name's Hank Adams. Howdy. Likewise. Well, what do you know? So that's Africa out there, huh? Yep. Well, I reckon it is. <laughs> Where'd you come from, Hank? Iowa. Iowa? Yeah. No kidding. You mean there is such a place? I always thought it was just something they slipped in the back of the geography book. Hey, there's two million folks besides me come from out there, and a lot of them are fighting this war same as you are. Now, wait a minute. I didn't mean nothing against it. I, I was just making with a gag, see? Yeah, I... you're, uh... You're from New York, huh? Yeah, how'd you guess? You ever been there? No. Never was out of Iowa until I got in this here army. Yeah, I know it. It sure broadens a guy. Yeah. Say, uh, are you scared? Yeah, yeah. I guess I am. Ain't you? Who, me? Yeah. Georgie Gordon? He's scared of a fight just because they call it a war? Me afraid? Well, 
Ain't you? Yep, I guess so. Uh, uh, I guess so. Uh. <laughs> well, what are you thinking about, Hank? Uh, ah, you, you'd just laugh at me if I told you. No, no, I wouldn't laugh. Maybe, uh, maybe you're thinking about some cute little gal, huh? A gal? <laughs> no. I'm thinking of a cow. A what? A cow. Yeah, and I was thinking of about my home, about my farm. Well, what's so funny about that? I've been thinking about it, too. You have? Yeah. A nifty one-room job just off Broadway, right in our heart of things. Just a small farm, I got, but it's big enough for us, I guess. <laughs> Only three of us in the family, and we couldn't handle no more land if we had it, I guess. Land. Bedlow Island, Staten Island, and the Bronx. Now, there's a lovely hunk of ground. See, when you're born with a plow in your hand like I was, it's all you want. Oh, I want a lot of things. Right now, I wish I could see a sight and little chemical blonde. Ah! Hey, you, I, I wish you could see my span of mules. You won't find prettier mules in the whole blame county. And oysters. The best oysters in the world are at Marco's. Well, we ain't got no oysters in Iowa. But we sure got some mighty fine trout. You like trout? Trout? Oh, I'm crazy about it. Yeah. Say, you know, Hank, ain't it surprising how much two guys can have in common? Yes, sir, it sure is. Yeah. Whew. Boy, it seems a long ways out there, though, way out to Iowa. Ditto, New York. You know, I, I guess the thing I miss most, though, is, is Angel. Angel? Oh, your girl. <laughs> no. Angel's my prize-winning heifer. Huh? She's a cow, Georgie. A real champion, too, boy. You know, she took the blue ribbon at the county fair. A cow? Yeah. Well, I'll be a... All right, you guys, this is it. Hit the beach. <laughs> Brother, we hit it. We spilled out of those boats like dimes out of a jackpot. We charged up that beach rare and ago, all set to the Nats to fight a dark continent. All geared up, you understand? But here's the kicker. There was nobody there to fight. No Nazis. Just a bunch of jabbering Arabs. Uh, I like any American hey, cigarette. You give cigarette. What oh, these guys catch cigarette. on fast? Quit crawling all over me, will ya? Wait a minute, Georgie. Wait a minute. I don't smoke, but let them have some, huh? That's a friendly thing to do, I think. All right. Hey, yo, Omar. Oh. And you, hey, let go of me. I don't smoke. Ask all right, all right. Take the cigarettes. Take the whole pack, but leave me alone, will ya? Oh, that bowing and scraping just for a cigarette. Yeah, now, Georgie, that, that I don't think is it. It's because they, they like us, you know. I believe they're kind of glad to see us out here. Yeah, I guess we were glad to see them, too. It was like going to the dentist and finding he had taken the day off. And that day we found out the real meaning of infantry. A full pack in the African sun, brother, is no setup. We marched and we marched. I was dead on my feet by the time Chow was called there. The sun was just about ready to give up for the day, and so was I when we stopped. Well, what do you think of Africa now, Hank? Well, I don't know. Guess it's all right. You like anything, don't you? <laughs> well, most anything. Well, I can tell you this much. Africa don't look as good to me now as it did this morning, and it didn't look good then. <laughs> now what's happened? What's going on? Ah, look at them there, Georgie. They... Must be a hundred of them. Well, what are they doing? And who's that Ali Baba in a tower there screaming as... I don't know. I reckon he's a priest up there or something. And all those guys on their hands and knees in the street. Hey, quiet. Quiet. Hey, what's going on? What's cooking with these guys? Shh, shut up. I, th I think they're praying. Praying? Yeah. Well, if that ain't a fine development for a war, a revival meeting yet. Huh. Allahu Akbar. Huh? Allahu Akbar. Give me a match. I got it. That sounds pretty, don't it? What? Mm, just some words from that prayer there that kind of keeps running through my head. Allahu Akbar. Hey, you know, I, I kind of like the feel of them words. Sounds like pig Latin to me. Well, the least you could do is carry matches. Well, what's that, Allahu? What's it mean? I don't know. But it's a funny thing, you know what, Georgie? Here we are, halfway around the world, and Arab way up there in that tower. Kind of makes me feel like I was back home in my church. Oh, there I go, talking about that farm again. No, no, go ahead, kid, talk. Go ahead if it makes you feel good. Well, I'll tell you, Sunday's back home, you know. I used to get my kid brother Jimmy up extra early to help water the stock. You know. 
Yeah. Now, you see, that way I had a lot, a lot of time to work on Angel. Oh, boy, I'd, I'd wash her up real good, like, and brush her tail and trim her hoofs up a little bit. <laughs> I'd work on her till she's shown up. Yeah, she was the prettiest heifer anywhere. Yeah, and uh, I always felt better, you know, going to church, I mean. I always felt better. It makes, makes a man think, don't it? Well, I don't know. I, I never went to church much. Hmm? Well, I used to when I was a kid. But uh, what made you call her Angel? Well, I didn't. Not at first, anyways. See, when she was born, she was uh, scrawny and skinny. And, uh, I called her Angles. But that 4-H club we got back there home made a mistake on a registration slip to give me back, and, <laughs> and it come out Angel. <laughs> I never bothered much about changing it. You know something, Georgie? She just naturally grew into that name. <laughs> yep. Oh, I think I've known guys that were dame wacky and horse wacky and even jive wacky, but you're the first guy I ever ran into that was cow wacky. <laughs> And he was, too. Even when the novelty of being in Africa wore off, he kept talking about her. And all we did in those days was march and camp and camp and march. But one day, the buzz got around that we were trying to catch up to a Nazi character called the Fox. And the next day, a squadron of Nazi planes came tearing at us like, like from nowhere. Spread out, you guys! Spread out! Hit the dirt! <laughs> We scattered, took the cover. Our anti-aircraft got into action. Another barrage came, this time the screaming Mimis from the Nazis who were holding down our second objective, an oasis. An oasis? A couple of scrawny looking palms and a water hole. Yeah, that's what all his shooting was about. And after I got used to the idea that these maneuvers were for keeps, I... I looked around to see how Hank was doing. I couldn't see him. I thought maybe he'd been hit, and then I heard him yell, Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! And the guys around him, they picked it up. They took to those crazy words like a dame takes to mink. And Hank, the crazy fool, shouting at the top of his lungs, running and shooting like a Comanche Indian. I crawled behind the dunes to where he was. Hey, pal, what are you trying to do? Win the war all by yourself? Now, take it easy. Hey, don't worry about me, Georgie. There ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Well, who's worried about you? I just want to be sure we both break in our shoes before the war's over. My shoes is broken in. They feel fine on me. So, all right, then. I'm worried about my shoes. The Nazis kept pouring it into us. I didn't even try to keep up with farmer boy Hank. I was pretty busy on my own. Well, we took that water hole, and after all that sun and dust, it sure looked beautiful. I was out on my feet. It felt swell just to lay on that ground and do nothing. I stretched my five foot six out as far as it'd go, and I felt great. I felt at least six foot five. Now, when they talked about experienced troops in the dispatches, they were talking about me, about Georgie Gordon, foot soldier, a guy with a gun. Hey, hey, what you so quiet about there, Georgie? Well, I was just wondering. What is Alawa Akbar? Uh, uh, Alawa Akbar, what does that mean? Oh. You want a match, Georgie? Well, I got me a whole bunch of them. No, no, I don't want to. Pretty awful out there, wasn't it? Yeah, sure was. Whew. Well, I wonder how she made out. Huh? What are you talking about? Angel. Angel? Georgie, you know who Angel is. I told you, she's my prize heifer. Today is State Fair Day way back home. There. Today? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Hank, you kill me. Did I say something funny? <laughs> All through the war, Hank was like that. He was a kind of safety valve, you might say. And every time I got too tied up about something, or when I thought we weren't going to make it, like at Anzio, he'd start talking about that cow of his, and pretty soon I'd be laughing and remembering what I wanted to go back to, and it wasn't so bad. But one thing I couldn't laugh off, it stuck with me and it heckled me. I had to find out. There was only one guy in the outfit that might know, and I... I hated to go to him. Always I figured the G.I.s that hung around after the chaplain were a bunch of wet noses, scared of their own shadows. I didn't want to be classed with him. But I went to him, just the same. Chaplain, can I see you? Sure, come on in. Take the load off your feet. I just got a box from home. You want some candy? Oh, sure, sure, thanks. That mud, some mess. 
You think we'll ever get clean again? Well, I don't know, sir. I'm, I'm getting used to myself this way. Huh. You've never stopped in before, Gordon. I'm glad you decided to come tonight. It's a gloomy night. Want to play cards? I've got a deck that's only partly soggy. No, thanks. I... Well, something's been on my mind a long time. Do you remember right after we landed in Africa how the guy started yelling that crazy battle cry? Why? You the fellow who started it? No, no, my buddy did. He... Well, it was okay, wasn't it? In the heat of emotion, Gordon, men have said many things. In battle, there seems to be just a thin thread holding men together. And yet it's a tough thread. Strong. We call it morale. Anything that can keep a bunch of men together, fighting for each other and for something, can't be bad. Yeah, I, I guess so. But but w w what does Alawa Akbar mean? What does that mean? Well, literally translated, it means God is great. Oh, no wonder it packs such a wallop. Yes, yeah. and everybody takes that wallop for granted. That's pretty much the general trouble in the world today. Well... Well, I, I, I used to go to church when I was a kid, but when I grew up, I got so busy trying to make a buck for That's my family right, and... That's right, Gordon. That's right. God is great. But we just never get around to letting him know about it. But you see, uh, Chapman, Some more I... more candy, Gordon? No. No, thanks. Well, I never forgot the chaplain. And I never forgot Alawa Akbar. It was good luck, especially to Hank and me. We went through Sicily, Italy, and France without a scratch. But you can't win every time, I guess, and it was just before VE Day. I busted out bowling when I saw Hank fall. I, I picked him up and I brought him back of the lines. Some brass had made a big fuss about giving me a medal, but Hank's my buddy, see? You, you just naturally pick up your buddy. No need for Congress to get in an uproar about it. And believe me, those, those next few days without Hank, I, I found out Sherman was right. War is strictly from hunger. And even after VE, I still felt sunk because I was gonna have to go home on rotation without knowing how it made out. I drove my CO crazy trying to get some dope about Hank, but I didn't get anywhere. He was loaded with problems without bothering with mine. That's why I went to the chaplain. And in a couple of days, he sent for me. Here you are, Gordon. Here's your pass. You'll find your buddy Adams in a field hospital in Brussels. Don't miss your sailing date. It's been set back a week. Well, how'd you do it? How'd you find out? How'd you wangle a pass? You should have come here in the first place. My boss has all kinds of influence. Your boss? Oh, oh Eisenhower? No, Gordon. I'm talking about my special boss. The big boss. The big... Oh, you mean... Well, well, tell him thanks for me, will you? He's easy to talk to. Why don't you tell him yourself? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll do that. Hank! What, you old son of Iowa? How are you? George, I'm, I'm right glad to see you. Well, same here. You, are. you look all right. That block and tackle you're wearing is mighty becoming to you, Corporal Adams. Yeah. Hey, uh, why the sourpuss? Oh, it, it ain't nothing. Come on, come on, spill it. I'm not worried. Oh, you got nothing to worry about, pal. The doc told me when they chip off all that plaster, why you conger out of this joint. Oh, I don't mind being here in the hospital. I, I wouldn't mind anything if I could just get back home there in time to help Angel. Look. That cow does pretty good on her own. She's got enough blue ribbons now to braid a tail. That ain't that, Georgie. And what the devil is it? <laughs> she's she's calving. She's calving. What's that? Well, what do you sure, mean? Sure, you know what I mean. She's she's gonna have a baby. A what? Yeah. It's not like she was some ordinary heifer either, Georgie. Well, now I've heard everything. See, it's her first one. Yeah. And and she's apt to have some kind of trouble or something. My ma's there and the kid brother, but he's so young. I, I ought to be there. That's all. Well, it seems to me, Hank, that a cow Georgie, can... Huh? I've been laying here in this bed, feeling sunk down, wondering what to do and all that stuff, and then you come along. I should have known you'd come. I should have hey, known if it all turned out. I knew it was going to happen. Now, wait a minute, kid. What do you got in that hayseed head of yours? You go. Yeah. You can get there in time, Georgie. Are you nuts? George, please, Let's listen. Let go of my arm. If you think I'm going to... Please, Georgie. No, Hank, now quit hanging on me, will you? Huh? I'm sorry. I'd like to do it for you, kid, but i got things to do. Yeah, that's right. i got things to do in New York. I promised a, a redhead. Georgie, you're the only person in the whole world that I'd trust my angel with. Now, quit looking at me with those big, dumb calf eyes, will you? 
Calf eyes. Yeah, you jake. If you go through life trusting anybody and everybody, you're gonna end up in a fine mess, going around thinking everybody's so darn noble. Just because a guy's civilly, you, you, you think you can ask Georgie, him just a... Georgie, Georgie, up until now, I thought we was good friends. Well, sure, sure, we're good friends, but get one thing through your ha head, Hank boy. That cow of yours ain't the only thing in the world, and me, I got better things to do than pace a stable floor. You mean, uh, you, you ain't gonna go? Not even for me? That's what I mean, Buster. You hit the nail right on the head. Georgie Gordon, you ought to have been ashamed of yourself, turning that poor kid down after all you and him went through together. You think I was a heel, huh? I think you were worse than that. The least you could have done was go out there and see that everything was all right. Yeah, you think so? Well, you know, Ginger, it's a funny thing, because that's just exactly what I did do. You did? Oh, Georgie, you mean you Imagine, were? Georgie Gordon, midwife. <laughs> and another thing, that Iowa ain't such a corny place after all. What happened with Angel? Oh, she took it fine. Her calf was born real early in the morning, about 4 a.m. Sure is a cute little guy. You should have seen him. Brown and white spots and strong, stood right up. They named him uh, after me, Georgie. <laughs> I just happen to have a picture of him in my wallet. Here, see? Oh, gee, isn't he cute? Yeah, and Hank writes me he's, uh, he's a pretty big steer now. Steer? Oh, my gosh, the steak's burning. Burning? Hey, wait a minute. Let me help oh, you. Oh, let it burn. I changed my plans. Georgie, honey, how would you like to take me out to dinner? Well, sure, baby, sure. Where would you like to go? Where? Why, to Clancy's Fish and Chowder House. Where else? Here again is your host, Jack Haley. You have just heard Family Theater, which is presented every week as a tribute to family life in the hope that in your home there'll be faith and understanding, yes, and forgiveness. In the hope that all the members of your family will be close together in affection and love. Pray for one another and with one another. Pray together as a family, because a family that prays together stays together. Our grateful thanks to Jack Haley, Stanley Clements, and Jack Bailey for their appearances, and to John and Gwen Bagney for writing our play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Terre. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Brief portions were transcribed. The supporting cast included Herb Butterfield, June Foray, Lou Krugman, and Larry Dodkin. Next week, our Family Theater star will be Peggy Cummins in The Fourth Strike. Your host will be John Lund. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts was made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Peggy Cummins and John Lund will star on Family Theater. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>